Hi everyone, welcome to my channel continuing the series SNCF 3710. The previous video we explained introductory like theory twice about the uh, PKI and SSL decryption and how they are working together. So let's complete uh, the uh, full picture and let's explain today the SSL policy, how we can create policy. Okay, we create a certificate. Then we have to create a policy to do an SSL decryption. Very good. Let's go directly to our lab. Here our lab. And okay. Last time we wait here and we enter the uh, this certificate and this certificate actually was well, I told you it's protected by a private key. So let me delete it. And just I want to insert the digital certificate along with public key. So how I can segregate the private key with the uh, private key from the pub, uh, private private key from the public key. Sorry. So um, close this one. Close also this one. So this is definitely download. Let me take the certificate here. Cut. Uh, in the C. Just put it here. Great. I have a software called OpenSSL. I already set up uh, this software and I put it in the C. So inside it, in the binary, uh, there is something called OpenSSL.exe. So this is what we want to deal with. So there is a command that I want to make it in the CMD. First of all, <coughs> I will copy this. So here I'm telling you that, yes, I'm inside the OpenSSL, this inside the bin, and I want to access the openssl.exe. This one, openssl.exe. Great. What else? Using the pkcs12 minus no search minus n. In here, refer to where is my certificate located. So it will be a C and its name is FMC dash SSL dot P12 and you can find it here FMC dash SSL dot P12. Uh, sorry. Okay. And I want to extract the private, so I will minus out where I will extract in the same location C and what I shall name it for example FMC dash five five dot pm pm so this should be the uh, extension for that enter it asks you for the password, the password for the private key that you encrypted. I was using as I remember one two three. Again, PIM password one two three. So now, if you can find FMC dash private dot PIM is created. So this is the private key. Now, I have to extract the public key, and this is what I want because the public key. This is the certificate that I want to install it in all the PCs now. Here, if uh, okay, give me the same command actually. Yes, it will be the same uh, for until PKC. So minus CL search minus no keys minus N. So here again, what is the location of? your uh, file, the same one, the original one, fmc minus sl.p12, let's nc fmc dash ssl dot p12, okay, I want to out 
So extract for me the public keys in the C backslash and you have to be name it like that pub dot pen. It will ask you for the password again one two three. It should be here created. You see the pub pen here? Great. This is what we want. So I will go to uh, the same CMD. Cert, let's open it. Cert, MGR.msc. Okay. So I deleted the previous one, as I guess. It was my SSL. Yes, it's deleting. Let me maximize this one. Now let me import the pump and see how it will. Uh, change its name because here in the pump if you open it select the program uh, not bad yes but not always okay here you see this is the information it's the name is Meari SSL cert like what I created in the object here let me remind you in the object here this is the certificate that I created here Meari SSL cert so this is the name will appear here and this is the beginning for the certificate. Okay, close it. So again here, import. Next, where this location I put it in the C. Okay, again you will not find it because it is version X point five zero nine version three. <clears throat> so make it all and get me the pump. This time it will not ask you for a password because this is what I want. Yes, where is it? Okay. Try to now observe the certificate. Now the private key removed and it's normal certificate, uh, digital uh, certificate with the public key only. If you open it. Here you will find with the usual blah blah blah. Fine. So we are here, we extracted, and it's here normal certificate and doesn't ask me for the password. I don't know why it's so complicated, but it's fine. Right now, let's go after I create an uh, internal certificate authority. So let me go to the policy, SSL policy. I have to create a policy. So by default, it is. Uh, Please hurry up, hurry up. By default, it will be empty. I have to create a new policy. You know, SSL policy will be having so many rules. So, new. Name it, for example, uh, SSL policy. Okay. The default action could be don't decrypt, block, block with reset. Usually, I'm doing don't, do not decrypt. So this is the default behavior for that if there is no any rule matched. Okay. I have a slowness. I don't know why. This process should not take time at all. Okay. It's there, but I don't know what's happened. I refresh from here. Okay, may I resell policy inside it? It will be an empty one. So if I add a rule and let me do this rule for inside and DMZ and destination will be outside. Okay, this rule I will name it. Uh, SSL decryption well the action I wanted decrypt with resign you remember I explained the resign because I'm, I want to do a resign okay so which one the Mary SSL cert I created inside the object the cert inside the object pretty good the logging, yes, enable the logging for me, why not? 
add. Now I have the rules here, save. Jump to the access control policy. And remember the SSL policy will be assigned to the access control policy itself, not with the rule. And from the SSL policy, I can differentiate the inside and outside. Okay. So now edit this policy. Here you can find SSL policy none. But this time I don't want it to be none. I want it to be Mi'ari SSL policy. That it has the policy that I will decrypt it from inside and DMZ to outside. Very nice. Um, I will most probably will apply it on inside to internet. Okay, let me enable the Where? Inside on the internet, yes, let me enable the login. Maybe I will be needing it. Okay, save. Save. Great, I think we are here. Just don't forget to push this bunch of configuration to your lovely firepower. Again, I don't know why it's making saving, saving. I will save and I will deploy and I will come back to you. So now it's uh, deployed and completed and let's test. So we are in VLAN 10 PC here. <coughs> Just I open the FMC from VLAN 10 because I have intervener routing so I can open whatever I want. Uh, close this one. Uh, yes, I have the certificate here now. So let me let me open uh, YouTube. So here, in the certificate, I want to see who the who 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 the one who issued this one. It's supposed to be our firepower. Mi'ari cert. Go down, where is it? Perfect. Issued by Mi'ari SSL cert. And whenever you are doing surfing here, click open a video, it should be the same. Okay, perfect. Let's try Facebook. Sorry. Facebook. So who is this one? May I research? Let me go to the uh, management PC. I didn't apply this rule in the management PC, as I guess. So YouTube. You see here, because in the management PC, I didn't put in the rule. So it's issued by GTSCA1C3. And it's passing our firewall, but I didn't apply SSL decryption on it. Let me remind you of the policy. Here the policy, what I did in the SSL. When I edit it. I created a rule inside it. I said in this rule, inside and DMZ when it's going to outside. This is the one who's going to do an SSL decryption. And resign. Here, decrypt, resign with this certificate. Who? Only inside and DMZ. I didn't include the management. That's why when I go to the management PC, here, the certificate will not be ours. If I go to the VLAN 10, the inside, then this is our management. Even if you open like my website, it is a secure website. Okay. Certificate. Down. Mi'ari SSL cert. Ah, the firewall is dropping and replacing by its Certificate that we create in the Certificate Authority. Perfect. 
Now, let's go and to see how the SSL decryption basically can understand the HTTPS now. A lot of people ask me, there is a simple uh, option in the rule, it's called HTTP response. Why well, didn't explain it before? Actually, I didn't explain it before because of this moment. HTTP response, let me explain it to you. It will work with a blocked, if you want to block, or interactive block. The first block response is responsible for a block. This is the message that you will find. Either there is no message or system prompt or customized. System prompt, you will leave the system to send its prompt. Interactive block response page. This means that you blocked a page, but you want the user to be continue for that. Let me uh, let me make a customize for this one. You are attempting to access forbidden website. Just I want to add, hey, it's Mihari here. Save. Okay. And let me save for HTTPS response. HTTPS response is working perfectly with a website is not secured. It's only HTTP. But if you remember, if you go back in my video when I explained the URL filtering, I when I was blocking uh, a website secured like HTTPS, the message in the blocking was appearing as a browser message, not our firewall message, not our firewall message. But now, when I enable the SSL decryption, then you will find the firewall how it's respond by HTTP response. So HTTP response will work perfectly without enabling HTTP uh, SSL decryption, but with HTTP only. When a website is HTTPS, it will be blocked, yes. But the response will be a browser response. You can try it your, yourself, but now let's apply this. So this is the response, yes. So let me go to the rule. I will create a rule here. block Miari website okay it will be block uh, block with the reset no problem it's from inside to outside it's simplified and the URL in the URL if you remember we created in the URLs Miari website this was my website okay so it's a block, it's fine. Okay, add, add. Perfect. And let me also block. Mm, block Facebook, for example. But this time I want to block with interactive, interactive block. Okay. Again, from inside to outside, and URL here will be uh, type. Let me let me block it as an application. And let's see Facebook. Okay. Facebook. Application control and visibility, I will make a separate video for it. Uh, logging, yes, log for me. So, block zones inside, outside, application, yes, all the networks, add. There, there are two blocks now block Mihari and block, but let me in Mihari also enable the logging. So, and please again don't forget to put the specific rules at the top and the generic down okay
great save deploy check deploy deploy let me finish the deploy and I will come back to you so again here it's finished completed and let's see if I open a Chrome also you can make sure of if you go to settings privacy security security down many certificates and the trusted certificate rules you should see our certificate analysis and certificate great so now if I go to i.net very good access denied you are attempted to access forbidden sites consult your administrator this response you were not seeing it if you check my videos in the URL filter it was because it's SSS uh, uh, HTTPS so it was a browser response but now our firepower, firepower is responding let's see the certificate our certificate great Tab. let me check the uh, yeah let's go actually and to check the analysis in the events Okay. Mm. Here is Mary.net from PC block with reset inside to outside and specify for you actually you are using Chrome. Great. So now let me check the Facebook. Access denied. Hey, it's Mi'ari here. You are attempted to access forbidden site. You may continue with that. Okay, continue because it's interactive. So continue. It will allow me to go to the Facebook. And again, check the certificate. Down. It's our certificate. Perfect. It's doing the re-signing. If you go to here, refresh. Facebook. Okay, here interactive block. You see, yes, it's with Facebook from Chrome. Yeah, this and last packet was 1832. Now it's 1832. Yeah, this one. This one's traffic interactive block, interactive, interactive block. And after that, for the Facebook user pass bypass, because I press continue so it's allowing for me here if you can see it's still you are getting a feedback for Facebook but this time it allow the action because user bypass when I press confirm very good right now is our certificate and this is decryption is working perfectly so this is all what you under you, you want to understanding this is the resign how it's working and uh, like in coming videos i would explain the file policy and uh, advanced malware protection and i will show you like when it is like the link https it will have the ability to inspect inside it so uh, this is all let me see the types and to explain the types just for uh, where is it Okay, we accept this. 
says root authority. Okay, and this is the version. I explained it below. PPI. Okay, so we have internal certificates. If you are performing outbound decryption, this is from inside to outside what we did. It means you will have to re-sign SSL communication exactly. In this re-signing process, you will use a certificate that was either generated by your FMC, this is what we did, or imported into your FMC from an external certificate authority. I will promise I will do my best to do a video for that. The internal CA object allowed you to perform either operation. Sure, yes. So from the internal CA, I can perform two things. First thing is to generate a CA from our FMC or to make it with our server. If I, we did like our server, it's, it's the CA and I import it inside the FMC. So both things will be that. What else? Trusted CAs? Yes, if I made the, again, the server is a certificate authority, then I have to put its certificate, the first certificate I'm issuing in the trusted CAs, that yes, this is a trusted one. External certificates, here these objects represent a server public key certificate that does not belong to your organization. Of course, if I'm dealing with external uh, servers like DigiSearch, Google, whatever, they consist of the object name and the certificate. You can use these in SSL rules to control whether or not you decrypt the traffic using the server certificate. An example would be a self-signed server certificate that you trust but cannot verify because it is not signed by trusted CA. Internal certs, these objects have been server public key certificate that belong to your organization. This consists of the object name, the public key certificate, and the uh, paired private key. These are used for the following purpose, decrypting incoming traffic to one of your organization server using the known private key, identity service engine eyes integration. Yes, if you want to integrate eyes with your FMC, then the, through a certificate, of course, you can integrate them without certificate, but if you are uh, doing that, yes, uh, captive portal configuration to authenticate the identity of your captive portal device when users connect to via web browser. If you want to make a captive portal that uh, when user want to connect, then there is a page will pop up for the user to enter username and password for that. One last thing I want to just tell you: what is the location of SSL decryption in our packet flow? Let me see where the packet flow. I can see from here. Uh, no, no, no. I open it. I remember I open it. Okay. When the packet is coming to the Lina engine, the Ingress one, okay, after doing that, going to the uh, memory temporarily, and after that, going to this one. You see where the SSL decryption is done here? In this. And after that, if you enable something here, yes, it will go further and further until it's going to the Lina Ingress here and going to the outside. Then the SSL decryption policy is being here and the resign is doing like here by your file. So SSL decryption is doing complete in stored, yes. I hope this is like very important for you. Uh, please, if you like the video, subscribe, like, and share, and see you next one.